Welcome to the Network Plus exam number N10006. This is a lecture material out of the authorized cert guide. This is chapter one, computer network fundamentals. So I guess the first question is, is what's a network? And that's one of the foundation topics we have to discuss is we have to define what a network is. And we also have to look at, can we define networks based off of items like the geography or the topology or maybe even the resource location. Are those possible ways that we can view networks? And so, what's the purpose of a network? What are some examples of network components? How are networks defined geographically and by topology? And how are networks defined by resource location? So what's the purpose of a network? With that, it's about shared communication or shared resources. Whether the resource be a printer, a file, data, doesn't really matter. It is essentially being able to share and communicate from one computer or node to another. So what are examples of network components? Obviously, we have to have in devices, nodes. That could be a computer, a user, a printer, a scanner, they could be many things. Maybe a wireless access point, maybe some type of biometric reader. Uh, normally to help facilitate that communication, if we're talking locally, it could be a switch. If we're talking over the internet, it could be a router. So I mean, there's different components. So how are networks defined geographically? So if we're talking maybe a local area network, a LAN, we could be talking maybe local, same room, same building, same floor maybe. If we are talking maybe a metro area, like a city, we could be talking about a MAN, M-A-N. If we're talking uh, larger areas, we might be talking about a WAN, W-A-N. Now normally a WAN could include multiple lands so for example the internet the internet is a large wan consisting of several large lands l a n so that's just some basic examples uh, if we're looking at a large campus maybe not so big as a metro area but still fairly large we might be talking about a can campus area network uh, if we're talking about a storage network, we might be talking about a SAN, storage area network. So, I mean, geographically, this keeps going on. So, how are these defined by topology? How are they laid out? How are the wires being connected? That's what that means. I have some examples of topologies coming up, so bear with me. And what about based off of resource location? That's also another big one. And again, Hang off with this, I have examples coming up. So what are examples of how you use networks in every day? Could be GPS, email, online banking, online uh, game playing, um, MMOs, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, if you stream Netflix or YouTube or Hulu, those are just some examples. Others could be file sharing, uh, download sites, video chatting like Skype and FaceTime, basic web surfing, instant messaging, messaging via cell phone, other types of social media like Facebook, Twitter, Vine, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Imager, so forth. What about our voice? What about our phone systems? That could be a voice over IP. So we already talked about some components, routers and switches, dumb switches known as hubs, clients, end users or end nodes, servers, after you things that are hosting resources, that's a good example. So other network components could be how we actually interconnect them. We already talked about a router, but a router is again what sets between a LAN and a WAN. So the router actually allows for communication 
from one network to another. And that also means we have to talk about the media, or medium is being used. So between our PCs, our servers, our switches, our routers, is it all the same cabling? And not necessarily. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Most of the time it falls between three general types, copper, fiber, or radio frequencies, or uh, Wi-Fi, which is still radio frequencies. But I mean, they can change depending on our needs. So the geographical, again, we already talked about lands, mans, wans, cans, but we could also have a personal area network, a pan. Again, geographical is how close the components could be to one another. So examples of a pan. Normally it's us. We're talking within a few meters. We could be talking a USB or Bluetooth. Could be just our personal network between us and our devices we're using. Uh, our phone, our Bluetooth headset connecting to our phone. Maybe a keyboard. Land components could be, again, a room, building, a floor, normally less than 100 meters. Could be a Ethernet-based cable, so Cat 5E, Cat 6, maybe also fiber. Maybe could be a wireless, the 802.11x standard. X meaning it's 802.11a, b, g, n, ac. All the different types of standards, and again, different types of components could be our PCs, routers, switches, so forth, which we've already talked about. Campus area network, again, cluster of buildings, could be uh, more buildings, normally for a campus. We could be talking about uh, normally fiber, coax, uh, maybe. Uh, Ethernet, though, Cat5, Cat6, wireless could be, again, there are 802.11. Or maybe even microwave components. This is going to be to connect the campus, not to end users, but connecting the buildings. So this could be routers and switches and wireless access points, and maybe even wireless bridges. Next, our man. Again, city or metro wide. Distance could be small to large within a city. We're talking normally fiber. Coax, not so much, normally fiber. Uh, wireless could be 802.16 or what we normally uh, call WiMAX. Not Wi Fi, but WiMAX. Maybe it could include microwaves. Here, the components would be routers, higher end switches, wireless devices like wireless access points and bridges. Because again, this isn't about connecting the individual, this is more about connecting the buildings. WAN, uh, a wide area network is again maybe a state, country, global. It could be from small distances to large distances. Normally we're talking fiber. It doesn't have to be. I mean, we could still be talking about copper, but with this normally it's going to be fiber. Here coax in terms of maybe between end users and their ISPs, maybe. Uh, wireless could be WiMAX and microwave. And again, components are going to be routers and high, high level switches. Not the same type of switch you'd be seeing in a LAN, but we're talking larger switches. So network defined by topology. That is how they are actually wired up. And generally we talk about a few different types of topologies. Buses, rings, stars, hub and spoke, full mesh, and partial mesh. So what is a bus? A bus is a single pathway that everyone connects to. It goes from one end to the other and then repeats. Everyone taking turns. No one allowing communication at the same time. Next is a ring topology. It's a giant ring, similar to a bus, except instead of starting over, it goes in a giant circle. So one person gets the start and they take turns. It goes from one to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth and back to one and just giant loop. Then we have a star topology 
where everything centrally connects to a device. And this is a more common type of topology. Uh, you'll, so, uh, you'll notice that all of our devices in a lab environment or in a classroom environment may connect to one centralized switch. So star topology is, is most common. Hub and spoke, we have one centralized device and then we have hubs coming off of that, like a, a wheel, like a hub and spoke wheel. Full mesh, every device is connected to every other device. And a big thing here is if one pathway goes down, it will just revert to a different pathway. So, for example, if this guy here gets knocked out, if this router can't communicate that way, it may go a different route because this pathway kills that connection. Partial mesh could be a, uh, here it's still showing full mesh, but we may have that link disconnected and that link disconnected, but this router can still communicate different ways. So just because not everything is connected, it doesn't mean that things still can communicate. So by resource location, normally this is defined in two different ways. Centrally managed versus non-centrally managed. So centrally managed normally is a client server environment and that's where a resource is centrally managed by the server. And then you have in clients or just clients connecting to that centralized resource to get that resource. And that could be a dedicated file share, that could be a web server serving a web page, could be a resource like a printer. Generally, this helps ease administration, ease management of that resource. But in contrast, we could have a peer-to-peer -peer network, and that could be everyone connects to everyone for those resources, like a torrent sharing. But there's issues like uh, security and scalability. Peer-to-peer -peer normally doesn't scale very well. So for an example, our client server, everything is centralized to a file server. And that file server serves that resource. With a peer-to-peer, -peer, there is no centralization. One thing or one user shares a resource, and the other uh, nodes could share their resources. There is no centralized management whatsoever. So, in summary, we talked about the various network components like clients and servers, hubs, switches, routers. We talked about things like copper-based cabling like Ethernet, Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, WANs, fiber. We talked about different types of classifications, uh, geography, topology, resource location. And that's actually it for this chapter. I wanted to thank you guys.